On the paper talk today, we'll be looking at all the fallout from the Manchester derby. Yes, we've got to talk about it a bit more. Apologies about that. We'll also be looking at transfer rumours. We've been linked with a playmaker and the latest uh, rumours about another managerial man being a managerial man, a manager being added to the shortlist. And I'm not too keen on this one. Make sure you check it out. Jay here, Stretford Paddock. As you can see, I'm outside Old Trafford for the paper talk and the weather is mild, unlike my mood even, after yesterday's abject performance in the Manchester derby that saw United lose 4-1 to Manchester City. As you would expect, much of the stories this morning focus on the fallout from that, the quotes, the reaction, all that sort of stuff. I'll talk about it briefly and then we'll move on because there's other stories as well and I don't just want to focus on the Manchester Derby because, to be honest with you, I've had enough of it to last me a lifetime. Um, the big news yesterday was that Cristiano Ronaldo and Edison Cavani were in the squad, neither of them fit and there was sort of different reasons given. Um, when it comes to Cristiano Ronaldo, it was... The, the the sort of the reports were or the news was that it was his hip flexor I think was the reason that he uh, he wasn't able to feature in the squad now there's been some sort of intrigue suggestions that that wasn't the case that perhaps he was dropped and he just didn't want to play when he found out he wasn't starting there was a few rumours doing the rounds of social media that his sister likes to post saying something like that there's all sorts of intrigue going on there's also the fact that he apparently flew to Portugal straight away he didn't stay for the game he didn't go to the Lowry for the team meeting or anything like that he just got off anyway Ralph Radnick's addressed it after the match. He said, I have to believe my medical department. My doctor came to see me on Friday morning before training and told me Cristiano Ronaldo cannot train because of some problems with his hip flexor. And the same was true on Saturday. And that's why he couldn't be part of the squad. And as I said yesterday on the watch long, the hips don't lie. And I am going to repeat that awful joke. Apologies. Last thing you want on a Monday morning. Uh, there's also, obviously, Edinson Cavani. Now, it's slightly different with Cavani. We go through this thing all the time with Cavani. It's not the case of he's not fit or he, you know, he's injured. It always seems to be he says he's injured. And it was the same thing ahead of the derby. Ralph Radnick had this to say about, um, about Edison Cavani and his unavailability for the, the, the game at the Etihad. He says, what does it help if I tell you it's frustrating? It's just a fact. If players tell the doctor and the medical department that they are injured and cannot play, I have to accept it. As a manager, I cannot force a player to play if he thinks he's not available because he has an injury. Eddie trained in the last three days, he trained well, but he still felt after those three training sessions that he's not, still not fit to play. That is a fact and as a manager I cannot force a player to play if he doesn't feel fit or well enough to play. So it's a little bit disappointing for me that if he's trained well for three days, I'd expect him to be fit for the derby. I'd expect him to be at least say, OK, worst case scenario, maybe I've not got 90 minutes in me, maybe I've not got the full game, maybe I can either come on as a sub or you can, you know, give me an hour or whatever. But to just not be available after three days, it seems like after three days of training well, according to his manager, you think he'd be up for it, especially for a game as that magnitude. You don't have to be in Manchester long to know the, the, the sort of the importance of the Manchester derby, what it means to, to the fans, what it means as well to so this club. We need points. We need our best players available. And to not have Edinson Cavani and Cristiano Ronaldo as well, it just stinks a little bit. And listen, we all love Cavani. He's a very popular player. But when you hear things like that, when you hear yet again he's ruled himself out, especially after he's been training for three days, it does leave a bit of a sour taste in the mouth because you just wonder, is he just there on a bit of a vacation to, to sort of cherry pick the games he wants to play in before he gets a move in the summer? He's on a lot of money. OK, OK, being on a lot of money doesn't make you, you know, doesn't stop you being injured. But when you're on a lot of money, you should be available if you're fit enough. And it seems to me like you've been playing and training for three days, then you should be available for a game against Manchester City. And to see that he just isn't, he's just not available and ruled himself out again. We constantly hear this about an instant Cavani. He's told us he's not fit. He says he's not right. It's never we say or the doctors say he's not fit. It always seems to be, he says he's not right, he says he's not, not fit enough. We had this when Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was manager and we've had it again with Edinson Cavani this season. And it just leaves United short, it really does. And I, I look at the club a little bit and I go, they've got to look at their blaming this because we signed a player who had a pretty patchy injury record at best over the last few years. There was a reason why a player who scored, I think, the fourth amount, highest amount of goals in Europe over the last 10 seasons was available as a free agent right up until deadline day because everyone looked at his injury record and thought, mm, probably not for us. And, you know, when you look at his wages as well, that's the reason why. But United took that gamble and it's a gamble that looks like it's backfiring because we've been left short this season. And I just hope that we can start seeing Edison Cavani appearing for Manchester United because when he plays, he does well. He's just The games he plays in are few and far between. Uh, anyway, we'll move on to other stories. 
there's a story during the rounds here about United and, and uh, our managerial list, our short list. And the, the latest name that's been touted on it is Ralph Hasenhutl. You remember him? He's the manager of that team that we beat 9-0 here last season. Yeah, him. Apparently we want him to come and manage Manchester United now because that's what we do at this club. We're, we're a, a shambles. Listen, Harsen Hootl's doing a decent job at Southampton. I know he lost 4-0 to Villa at the weekend, but he's doing a decent job. Do I think he's a Manchester United manager? Absolutely not. Do I think we should be adding him to any sort of shortlist? No, I don't. I'll be honest with you. You don't just put people on a shortlist who should never manage the club. And I don't think he should. I don't think if Ralph, Ralph Arsene Hootl comes here, he commands the respect to some of these players. I don't think he knows what it's like to be a, a club like Manchester United. And I don't think he's, he's proven anything to show me he can be a success at Manchester United. He's done a good job at Southampton over an extended period of time, despite getting beaten 9-0 twice, once to us and once to Leicester City. But the idea that he can come here, take over Manchester United and challenge the likes of Pep Guardiola. Pep Guardiola? Pep Guardiola, Jurgen Klopp, Thomas Tuchel and all the rest of it is quite frankly, it's an idea cloaked in nonsense. So yeah, as you can see, I'm not too keen on that one. Uh, another story in the rounds this morning is Marcus Rashford is considering his future. Fabrizio Romano Sweet, he's concerned about his lack of game time. So it's close to Man United forward. Tell me, he always been professional, but he wants clarity. His current deal, or his current Manchester United deal runs out in 2023. Listen, I love Marcus Rashford, but his form's been terrible. It's that simple. Play yourself back into the team. Show us what you are about. I love Marcus Rashford, I just said it. I've said it twice now. I rate him, but he needs to step up again. He needs to regain his mojo. You can't just expect to be in a team when you've been playing as badly as he has. Now, I know he must be frustrated with a 19-year-old ahead of him, especially when the likes of Ronaldo, Cavani and Greenwood aren't available and Marshall's gone out alone and you're still not getting in a team. But there's a way to get around that. When you come on the pitch, when you're given opportunities, take them. He started against Atletico, but didn't have a good game, didn't. Came on against Manchester City, I don't blame him too much because he didn't get much service, but he didn't do much when he did have the ball. So, I just feel like he's got to step up. I, I do, and I, I'm just not, you know, this, despite my fondness for Marcus Rashford, I just don't think those sort of stories and reports, the day after a 4-1 defeat to Manchester City, help anyone. There's a time and a place and this isn't it. Also, there's another story during the round, uh, transfer story, because where would it be about a transfer story? Now, this is the kid from RB Leipzig, um, Christopher... And Kunku, a French lad, a um, bit of a playmaker, scored a lot of goals this season, got a lot of assists, 25 goals, 13 assists. Apparently, he's been linked with Manchester United and he's got, a, I think he's got a buyout clause, a release clause of 62 million, I think. Um, oh, sorry, it's not. It's 45.2 million he's available for. So we can get him for 45.2 million. He's a player that Ralph Hars uh, Ralph, Har Ralph Harsen, who have got him on the brain, I was that annoyed with his uh, the story of him linking with... Uh, linking in with United. Ralph Ragnick knows and is interested in. Again, we don't know who the manager's going to be. We don't know who's going to make the transfer decision. We don't know how much say Ralph Ragnick's going to have in this transfer window, the upcoming transfer window, but Christopher Uncucu could be one to keep an eye on. And just as a final one as well, I said I wasn't going to talk about the Manchester Derby anymore, so forgive me. There's one little story during the rounds, or not a story, it's just a, again, it's about a fallout from the result. It's Scott McTominay he gave an interview where he was pretty frank. He said, the most disappointing thing for us is how sloppy we were in the second half. And that's been spoken about in the dressing room. When you come to a place like this, you know you're still at the game at 2-1. You can't give the ball away so easily. Whenever you do that, you get punished. It comes down to individuals. It comes down to concentration. It comes down to how you deal with the expectation playing for Manchester United. And we can't continue playing like that. That's probably the most accurate sentence I've ever heard in my life. Manchester United cannot continue playing the way we have been. So there you have it. That's all the latest Manchester United news here for the paper talk. Make sure you are subscribing to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. We'll have the Paddock podcast later on. We'll have all the videos as well. So make sure you're checking out that. Check out the Paddock merch we've got as well on paddockmerch.com. I've been Jay. This has been the paper talk. Thanks for watching.